Hi, my name is Marie-Michelle Papin, and I would like to welcome you to this A3D tutorial on posing a ZBrush character using the Gozi plugin in a 3ds Max rig. If you've never heard of the Gozi plugin before, Gozi is a ZBrush plugin that's going to allow us to go back and forth between ZBrush and another software. In this case, we're going to use 3ds Max. So, if you're using ZBrush 4 or 6, it should already be installed by default. If you're using a previous version of the software, or if you uninstall it for some reason, you can go on the Pixelogic website and download it from the download section. So this technique is an alternative to the original Transpose Master technique. What's different about this one is that since you're going to use a rig, it add a lot more flexibility, pardon me, uh, than the other technique because you can really try a couple of pose, really do some testing and experimentation with it. So that's really what's great about this technique. So if you want to use this technique, you need first to get a zebra sculpt. So that's what I have right here. But you need to have subdivision level on the sub tool that you want to actually pose. So for example, on this character, I'm going to show you what I have. So I have something similar to this on every part of the character. So you need this for this technique to work. It doesn't need to be as low as that, but it definitely need to be lower than a couple of million polygons. So if you don't already have a lower version of your model, what you could do is make a new topology using ZBrush topology or another software. Or you could even use the zero measure if you have a newer version of ZBrush. So it would be pretty easy to get a lower version of uh, all of your sub tool like that. So the other thing you would need for this technique to work is a rig, of course. So here I'm in 3ds Max. This one is actually a custom rig. It's pretty complex, but you could have made a pretty simplistic rig. And right now I'm using a full finish like texture version of the model, but you could even have like imported like the all of the lower subdivision and rig that in 3ds Max that would do the job like perfectly anyway. So uh, now that you know everything that it's needed for the tutorial, let's get started. So first, on my side, everything is set up properly so that my little button here will bring me directly into 3ds Max. If you never used it before, just click on Gozi, the little button here, and a ZBrush going to help you set it up. If you want to change anything because you already pat another program or anything, you can go in the preference menu and update all the information right here. So basically, how's the technique going to work? It's pretty simple. You're going to choose the sub tool that you want to pose. For example, I'm going to start with a shirt and then you're going to use the little Gozi button. So right here, it brought me right into 3ds Max. So as you see, I just encountered my first problem. My ZBrush mesh doesn't fit my now uh, scanned mesh. So what I would like to do now is to match them together. So what you could do now is actually move that one, or you could move your skin mesh. Right now, I'm going to move my skin mesh, but I could do the opposite. It wouldn't be a problem. So let's do this. So it doesn't need to be perfect as long as it makes a bit of sense. So here I go, just moving this around. You think things match. So let's see. This is getting close enough. So like I said, it really doesn't need to be completely fitted. This will work fine anyway. So let's say I'm happy with that. What I will do now is that I'm going to pose a character because obviously it's not posed right now. So I'm just going to do a very silly pause because it doesn't really matter right now. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to click on the auto key here because I want to make sure to keep my T pose here because it's exactly the same then my ZBrush mesh. So I'm going to go a little bit further on the timeline and I'm going to start posing. So I'm going to show you my animation animation scale right now, which are not really great. So and just do a little pause that's going to really show some movement.
and a rib cage. Since we're actually posing this shirt, I'm gonna move this arm a bit. There we go. Let's say I'm happy with that. So, what I'm gonna do now, Sam, I'm, I'm gonna go back um, zero on the timeline. I'm gonna select my ZBrush mesh. I'm gonna go here in the modifier and add a modifier. This one is called Skin Wrap. So I'm just gonna find it, it's right here. Click on that and I'm gonna add here the mesh that I want to follow because actually it's going to wrap around the skin and basically the name is pretty telling and it's going to wrap around the skinning that I did on the other character so I'm going to click on the other character right now so now it should be fitted sometime if you have bigger mesh you're going to see this little calculation here don't click you might crash max so just let it calculate and then you're going to be fine so right now all I have to do is to go right here and you can see that my mesh is following the other one sometimes though it does create some problems so what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna isolate that mesh with alt Q so let's see so it did create some issue here so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna apply this so I'm gonna collapse the stack yes and I'm gonna come and fix the issue that I can see so it's pretty easy if you're lucky, you won't have too much to fix. Happens sometimes, depending. So I'm just gonna find which vertices go where. So I think that's actually the inside of the shirt. So I'm gonna bring those inside because I don't really need that out. Certain uh, mistake like that can happen especially like me i had a, a backpack on the character so sometimes it's not too sure which one to follow so you can have some little mistake like that so it's not too much of a big deal it's easily fixable so that's what i'm doing right now so just correcting those that's not pretty but it doesn't matter it's the inside of the shirt so let's see that doesn't look too bad. There you go. Very important here, but so is there any weird deformation going on? Of course it's a bit weird because I get some fold here, so sometimes it's going a bit everywhere. But for the rest, it's not too bad. So let's see what's gonna happen. What we're gonna do now is that we're going to click right here, go Z, and go ZBrush. So what ZBrush did right now is it updated the lowest subdivision level of my mesh for this new position. So if I go back to my highest subdivision level, it just updated it. So it's perfect. So what I need to do now is to do it to every single one of my subtool. Of course, if you have 75 subtool, it can be quite long, but even for quite a complex character, you can usually do all of the technique under an hour, so it's really not bad. So I'm just going to do it with another part right now. So let's go again and click Go Z. Perfect. So this time, no need to move that around. It's already fitted. I'm going to bring it back to zero in the timeline. So this one again, I already have my ZBrush mesh selected. All I need to do is get add a skin wrap modifier. Let me find this skin wrap. And then add here. Click on the other model. Calculation, nothing, it's fine. So here I can drag it again. Perfect. Isolate the model, all Q. Let's check if that created some weird stuff. So I'm gonna collapse the stack. Yes. And let's see here. That's not too bad. It happens because uh, it's a mesh made for video games, so you often use interpenetration to hide 
when you have deformation in the video game. It's not too bad, it should do the job. So let's see. That looks fine to me. Oop, we got some weird stuff going on here. I'm just gonna bring that back. Looks good to me. This doesn't really matter here anyway, it's probably gonna be hidden by the shark. Here again, because of the interpenetration that we use in video games, you can maybe just relax it a bit. It should be fine no matter what. The clothing fold will probably hide any problem. So here, I could actually try to fix that. Maybe I, I put the character in a weird position. It's not too bad. Once again, there's a lot of fold there, so it should be fine. If there's anything, any way we can still move it once we're going to be back into ZBrush. So that sounds about right to me. I think we're going to try and bring that back. So go Z. Go ZBrush. And here we are. So we can go back to our IO subdivision level. And here we go. So now, of course, sometimes you can see some problem, but it's not too bad. What you can do now is, as usual, just you can go back a little bit lower and then uh, maybe smooth some things out to fix a little bug. Sometimes it's going to create maybe, that's not too bad. I could create a new fold here to hide something. So that's how you could pose a character use a Degozi plugin and a, Ma a rig from Max. So I really hope that was useful. You can use this technique for a wide variety of uh, of uh, purpose. Like uh, if you want to do a nice beauty shot of your character, that's a really great technique because it showcases your work so much better than using the classic typos. Or if you're trying to do some 3D printing, maybe you want to, you have this really cool model and you want her to be posed and this very cool stand. Well, that's a really, really great way to quickly do a little pose for the character. So I really hope that was useful and that you enjoyed the tutorial. And I'll see you again soon.